Hey everyone, um, I am going to hopefully quickly uh, show you how to install open boxes on uh, a DigitalOcean drop droplet. Um, I'll also make a video for uh, AWS uh, EC2 and maybe uh, Linode or Linode, uh, but we're, we're going to start with uh, an, a droplet. So first, let's uh, open up the documentation, um, and we'll go to the Ubuntu instructions because that's what, where we'll install it. Um, so the next step would be to actually go to Digital Option, and um, so actually, you just go to let's go to Digital Option.com instead of that page. Uh, so here you'll actually probably sign up uh, first, but I'm going to log in pretending that uh, I, well, I do have an account, so um, I'm going to log in. And what you'll notice once you log into uh, DigitalOcean is that they'll show you what your your droplets in a, in a uh, table here. Um, yours will probably be empty, uh, but it's fairly easy to actually create a new droplet. Um, so in order to create a drop, you're essentially going to choose the operating system uh, as well as the size, like memory, RAM, uh, for your uh, for your server and where you'd like it to exist. It doesn't matter where you, where you go um, or where you put it. But um, let's see. What does matter is actually you can choose, I think, pretty much any of these. Um, and it should work. I'm familiar most, or most familiar with Ubuntu, so I'm going to pick Ubuntu. But I'm going to drop down to uh, 1404 uh, because I know that they have uh, JDK 7 and Tomcat 7 on there. So I'm going to install it on with those um, requirements or with those um, uh, prerequisites because I know they work. Uh, and 1404 is actually a long-term support, so it should be around for, I believe, up to five years after, um, uh, for five years from 2014. So we should be fine for a while. Uh, the next step would be to pick a um, uh, the the size of the box. And right now, I think the the best choice or the the, the lowest choice you could probably go with would be twenty uh, twenty dollars a month. Um, you might be able to, to get away with uh, the, the one gigabyte of memory, but um, it's probably not worth the hassle. You'll end up running into some out-of-memory errors um, pretty quickly, uh, running <clears throat> running Tomcat on, on you know in less than a gig. So we will. Um, we're just going to choose New York. Uh, I'm going to leave the default. We don't really need any of these things at the moment, but you're free to, uh, to, to add those options if you'd like. I'm going to add my SSH key. This just allows me to um, log into the server without a password, essentially. Um, we, you can create an, a, public, a private, private key on your, your machine and then uh, put the public key on the actual uh, server instance so that it doesn't require you to um, to enter a password each time. It's just a nice convenience, but you don't need to do that. You'll end up getting a root, um, the root username and password uh, from, uh, you know, after you create your uh, your instance. So this should be fine. So this uh, gets created pretty quickly. And once it does, we can actually log on and start installing um, the prerequisites. I will open up okay so uh, it's ready this is our IP address I'm going to copy that now just so I don't have to go back to it and what we're going to do is um, edit. and I'm able to log in to this server uh, without entering a password because I've, I've already um, basically put my public key on the server, uh, but you might end up uh, getting a password prompt there. 
and you should just enter the password that's given to you by uh, DigitalOcean. So first step, I think, we'll go back to our um, sorry, instructions here. Uh, and so the first step would be to install all the prerequisites. Um, I actually don't even know if we need Java, so I'm just going to install Tomcat and MySQL. Pseudo. First step actually is to update just to make sure the uh, the repo definitions, I guess, um, are all uh, the latest. Um, from there, we're going to do apt install Tomcat. Seven. Good. Say yes. Um, after that, we'll install MySQL five five or five six. It doesn't really matter. And it's going to start uh, Tomcat for us. We actually have to go off and do one more thing there uh, to configure. Tomcat to start up a little bit faster, but I'll show you that after. And get install SQL server. And I guess we'll do 5.6 here. That's um, my fault. And this will ask us for some config information. Um, so you'll want to enter in a password, repeat the password. And now my seek will be in, will be installed. Okay, uh, I'll be right back. Um, so having taken those two steps, what we should see, uh, but we won't, is a running instance of uh, where is it? Sorry. Oh, right here. Um, so I'm going to copy this. Should see is a running instance of Tomcat, but we likely won't. Oh, it did work. Okay. Um, what we do need to do though is. Uh, Add a um, add in a config file for Tomcat, and that is going to m.sh. So what this is like an um, additional configuration file that uh, is used by. Uh, Tomcat on startup to set memory properties for um, your heap and your perm gen, uh, permanent, permanent generation uh, memory uh, allocations. So uh, a kind of basic Tomcat instance will, will do fine uh, with about 512 megabytes. Um, open boxes would probably be most happy with a heap size of around a gig to two gigs. Um, perm gen can stay uh, at 256, that's fine. The important part here is this uh, security, sorry, this um, configuration, which basically uh, enables a non-blocking uh, entropy pool um, to prevent Tomcat from uh, basically blocking for minutes at a time while, uh, you know, the it's hard to explain, but you can go out and look. Um, but the, basically, uh, there's a, an entry pool, entry entropy pool that's created to um, generate random numbers, and it takes a while to to load or to, to be generated. And so, um, Tomcat ends up having to block on that if you don't um, set the setting. Essentially, what this does is just say, "Hey, we don't care. Um, go ahead and start Tomcat." Uh, up without it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is uh, service Tomcat start. Actually, let's see how long it did take. Uh, it took 25 seconds with the blocking entry 
pool by default. So what I'm going to do is sudo service. And now it should be less than a second, probably. Um, all right, and now. Okay, so now that we have Tomcat running, um, and we've seen that here, uh, what we want to do is go back to open boxes. So actually, you can look at the installation instructions, and we're going to want to download the the latest release. Um, there should be a link here, but I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, instead, we're just going to, uh, well, we can actually get it from the open boxes uh, website. So I'm going to go here and go to latest release. I just realized while I was doing this um, that there's no downloads uh, link here. So I'm going to add that to the website uh, as soon as I can. But for now, just grab it from the latest release. So you'll come here and you'll be able to get um, this hotfix 0711, uh, which is the latest and greatest release. Um, what I'm going to do is copy the link address and then come back to here and do just a wget paste and that will download that war file here. Um, before we move on we have to do some configuration things but essentially what we're going to want to do is just copy that war file into Tomcat once we're ready. Um, and I will be back in one second. Okay, so now that we've uh, downloaded uh, Tomcat, what we need to do is create the database. And so I'm going to go back to the instructions and just copy and paste here. Um, so what this line does, uh, and this is actually, uh, well, I'll just do it this way. Uh, so what this is doing is basically uh, running a command as though from the command line as though you were logged into uh, MySQL. And so you should recall what your your password is to. Um, get into MySQL as the root uh, user. Um, and what we'll do is create the base database. There's, there's nothing in it. It's just a, a sort of a placeholder for all the tables. And we can log in quickly just to show that. Um, so show databases, and we'll see a couple in here. Um, and then let's do use open boxes, show tables, and you'll see there's nothing in there. Um, so base what we when we actually deploy open boxes, what you'll um, the open boxes will take care of creating all the uh, the tables and columns and everything. So uh, we don't have to worry about that. So let's come back here. Um, one of the next steps is to just create a um, open boxes user and grant access to all open boxes objects sorry all objects within the open boxes database to that user so that's basically just um, the easiest way to get started with mysql is to um, is to just grant per permission um, to one user so what this is saying actually this is important so this is an open boxes user that is only allowed to access the database from the local host. So you won't be able to log into uh, to this MySQL database from outside without adding in another row uh, to specify, uh, you know, where it's um, where that user is allowed to uh, connect from. And if you wanted to do a wildcard, you could do something like this, but it's really dangerous. So I wouldn't do that. Um, and I would change this identified by clauses just for uh, setting the password. I would set this to something other than open boxes. Um, and, but for now, just for, for demo purposes, uh, I'm going to just leave it as is. Okay, so now we actually can, should be able to, boxes dash p, open boxes, and enter in the password open boxes. Oops. No, we're in. So we can show tables, select one. Um, next step will be to actually set the configuration um, file for open boxes, and that's um, by default is, is just using uh, the name of the, the application open boxes. Uh, 
and config dot properties. Uh, there are several. There are actually a bunch of different variants of this that you could use, but this is just the most uh, convenient. So I am going to uh, paste. It's actually not home in this case because uh, actually no, it is um, because we don't have a Tomcat user, so we can leave it at that. And what we're going to do is just copy all of this into that file. And I haven't actually touched this configuration file here in a really long time, um, but it should it should work. Uh, so we, we basically set up the, the data source with the username and password. Um, we set, we can actually change this to the IP that we have for box here. Copy that. And this will actually, this server URL should be whatever you end up um, using as your domain name. Uh, mail, we'll, we'll disable that for now, um, but I'll show you in another video how to configure mail. Um, the quick categories is not that important. Um, we'll, we can deal with that later. And all this other stuff is, is uh, really also not that important at the moment, but I can, I'll, I'll put another video uh, showing you all the different configuration options. Um, so we are going to do was actually make the dot grails directory. So now we can go in apologies for that. Um here. Config again. Sorry about all the screen changes. All right, so we now have uh, our configuration. We'll go back to the documentation, see what else we need to do. All right, good. Now we can actually go and copy. I'm actually going to check the um, just... All right, so uh, we actually do know where Tomcat is, so I'm just going to take uh, copy boxes or and book to far lib tomcat 7 web apps. And um, I'm going to copy it as just openboxes.war. If you wanted, oh, I can explain this later. Uh, so, so what this is going to do now is deploy the openboxes um, war file to tomcat and uh, create the database, uh, create all the tables and everything. Um, you might see a couple of errors, it doesn't really matter. Um, hopefully no big ones, but things like this um, we can fix later. Uh, we just need to give permission, I guess, to a directory so that we can create the stack trace. See what else we got to do. So um, at the end of the documentation, I actually talk about the uh, configuration settings. I did that earlier um, just because Tomcat was taking a while to start up um, when I tried to do this earlier. And so, so here's where um, it gets interesting. So all of the, um, we, we're using something called liquid base, which will take, um, basically database change sets or migrations um, and start running them on the database. And this has to start from the very beginning from like essentially the initial schema of open boxes and run through 
uh, all the change sets that, that have happened since uh, those early days. And so you can see um, we're running through all the 0.5x uh, change sets right now. And depending on your CPU and um, how much memory you have, this could take you know a couple of minutes to, to run through everything. And that's not a big deal. Um, so because open boxes take so long to run these from the very beginning, you might get some scary looking errors here. Uh, in this case, it says unknown column product essential. And, and what, what's happened is there's a background process that's running, uh, right now that is trying to do some things, uh, trying to do some operations on the product table and it's, it can't find, uh, the, the fields because we haven't actually gotten to creating those fields yet. Um, so you might see a couple of stack traces here that show some really bad errors, but they're not, they're not a big deal. And once you uh, restart the server again, um, you won't have any problems. The other issue here is once um, any, any stack traces that get created, they're usually sent to uh, an email uh, errors at openboxes.com. And that's even going to change, and we're going to be sending all of our um, error logs to another server called uh, Sentry. But what's happening here is that stack trace is getting created, and then the, um, the server is trying to send um, send that error stack trace to uh, an email address that I can you know look at, and it's saying that there's there's no uh, email server running on this server. So again, two issues that are not really that important. Um, I'm actually going to pause this now just because it could take a while. Um, we're almost done, but actually I'll just leave it because we're almost done. Okay, I lied. Um, <laughs> it took a lot longer than I expected. So now uh, all of those uh, change sets have been applied to the database. We can actually go... I think it still need, it still needs a little more time uh, to start up, but I'm going to check the database real quick. Login is boxes dash password. Now we can show tables, and we should see a bunch. And there they are. Um, select all from user and those are all of our users and passwords. Um, in general, we do not store the password in plain text, uh, but I think when we first started, uh, it was it was stored in plain text, but uh, that's no longer the case. So let's see. Here we go. Um, actually, I guess that was where it was before. Uh, Tomcat should be started up. I need to grab this again. Um, what we will end up doing later on is showing you how to set up a domain name so you don't have to keep copying this thing. Um, but I'll we'll go to 8080 slash open boxes and you should see your bright new installation. There you go. And now you can log in as admin uh, with the username and password. Um, and you get you get four locations. Uh, this is an unfortunate, uh, you know, thing um, where I haven't cleaned up the demo data at the moment. So you get the four original, uh, you know, locations that we had. Um, and we'll talk about all the the locations and and how you create them and how you create location groups and, and things like that um, in another video. But I just want to show you quickly um, once you log into the to one of the locations you've got a dashboard um, that is fairly ugly, um, but this is an instance of open boxes. Uh, have some fun.